It's what every kid playing ball in the backyard dreams about, hitting the clutch home run or earning the strikeout to win the World Series. Professional baseball is quite often the go-to answer when asking young players, what do you want to be when you grow up? Crazy. Well, earlier this month, the major leagues came calling for a trio of former Naperville stars, presenting one with a job to do and the others with a tough decision. Makes his major league debut. It's the call that every minor league baseball player hopes for, the one that ushers them to the show. Former Nequa Valley pitcher Ian Kroll was on the receiving end of the line on June 4th, and one day later he was pitching in front of 36,000. Coming into the sixth inning, the rookie told the Washington media his mind was clear. Butterflies were stirring. I was just running, not thinking about anything really. Kind of just going out there and doing my job. I wasn't really thinking about the situation, the big stage, all that. I was just trying to focus and do my job. And focus he did. After giving up a leadoff double, Kroll bore down and struck out the side. Daniel Murphy, six-time All-Star David Wright, and cleanup hitter Lucas Duda. And the young guy comes out of the bullpen and strikes out the side. He got Murphy, he got Wright, he got Duda. The sequence was no surprise to his high school coach. He has it all. He is absolutely fearless. And his, his very first outing, he strikes out David Wright. He didn't care. He didn't care who was standing up there. Much like in his big league debut, strikeouts were abundant for Nikwa when Kroll was on the hill in 07 and 08. The lean left-hander mowed down more than one and a half batters an inning in those two seasons while helping lead the Wildcats to a state title and a third place finish. Pro scouts started making their way to Naperville. Renner recalled being wowed by the Southpaw on several occasions. One that sticks out is the 2008 Super Sectional against Collinsville. I can't remember what inning it was, third, fourth, fifth inning, and he walks the base with nobody out. And I walked out there and chewed his butt and said, you know what, you're better than this, you need to get locked in, you know, whatever I said. And I walked back off, and he threw nine more pitches. Strike one, strike two, strike three, strike one, strike two, strike three, strike one, strike two, strike three, and walked off the mound. It was one of the most amazing things I'd ever seen. We went back to the tape. The mound conference came after a balk, not a base on balls, and Kroll's third out was a two-pitch ground out. But considering it was five years ago, we'll give Renner a pass. It was still pretty amazing. Moore was sure to be in store for 2009, Kroll's senior season, but an athletic code violation brought a season-long exile and the end of his days as a Wildcat baseball player. When the draft came, Kroll got the call from Oakland in the seventh round and quickly made his way up the professional ranks, earning the Athletics Minor League Pitcher of the Year award after a strong 2010 at Low A Kane County and High A Stockton. The next two years weren't as fruitful, 2011 brought an arm injury and a two-month suspension from the Athletics for an offensive tweet. Last season, Kroll was 2-9 and nine in two major league stops with an ERA north of five. This spring brought a change of scenery to the Washington organization and a new role, relief pitcher. As a starter, I was you know, trying to focus for six, seven innings at a time and not only have to for a couple innings, two at the most, you know, so that's been helping me a lot. It seems to have helped. In nine and two-thirds innings through June 27th, the former Wildcat has yet to allow a run. Just so blessed to be here and, you know, just so excited to have an opportunity like this. It's awesome. Former Naperville Central star Shane Conlon hasn't gotten the same call as Kroll quite yet, but the Kansas State first baseman has flirted with professional baseball since being drafted by the Royals in the 21st round of this year's draft. Back is slung it and gone, a home run! K-State is tied the game! I got a text from the Royal Scout, and he, um, you know, he said we're about to take you. He's been texting me all morning, and uh, we actually we were just like refreshing Twitter, and my roommates saw it, and then he just got it, like just went nuts during uh, our team meal, and he was cheering. Everyone was looking over, like, what's going on? The same question could be asked about the Wildcats' 2013 season, with Conlon and six other players hitting better than 320. Kansas State won its first conference title in 80 years hosted the program's first regional, and finished two runs shy of going to the College World Series, falling in its first ever Super Regional. That put Conlon at a crossroads. Stay for another shot at going to Omaha, or start the clock on a professional career. I went home, back to Lawrence, and uh, sat down with my parents and just, you know, basically did pros and cons of, of the decision, and there were many pros for each of them. This isn't the first time the lefty has had to make a big decision when it comes to baseball. 
In 2009, after leading St. Rita to a runner-up finish in the state tournament and a summer state title, he decided to transfer to his then home of Naperville Central for his senior season. He fit right in. Was he just kind of the right piece at the right time that you guys kind of needed as a spark plug? Well, Alex, we got Roy Hobbs that moved in. I mean, it, I mean, it's when you, you think about it, I'm not so sure there was a better high school pitcher in Illinois or a better high school position player. And he comes in and, I, you know, I don't care what kind of a team or what school you have, you add a player like that and it's instant. I mean, you're, you're going to make yourself a lot better. Come the first week of June, the Red Hawks were playing for a state title. On the other side, St. Rita. You don't get much sleep before a night like that. I mean, I could remember. I didn't get much sleep. I woke up early. It's like, this is Shane's team. This was Shane's moment. Uh, he rose up. And you know what? If, if St. Rita would have come back and beat us in that game, it wouldn't have changed anything. I mean, it still would have been a magical season for us. But uh, that what with Shane Conlon on the mound at first base and at the plate, it just wasn't going to happen. The senior struck out 10 and went the distance in a 10-4 victory. Here and now, the redshirt sophomore made plenty of people in Manhattan happy when he tweeted his plans, citing unfinished business as a reason to stay a Wildcat. You know, I think I'm, I'm better than the 21st round, honestly. So, you know, we'll, hopefully that uh, turns out the way I like it. And, you know, there's a lot of hard work from here in 11 months to happen. So just looking forward to that. One of Conlon's rivals on the high school field, former Naperville North outfielder and Maryland Terrapin Charlie White, also had the MLB come calling. White was picked by the Yankees in the 29th round. But I've worked towards my whole life was, you know, trying to get drafted and, you know, trying to make it to the big leagues. It was a dream come true to see my, see my name pop up on the draft tracker and then get the call from the Yankee scout that drafted me. He rose up draft boards this season after leading the Terps with 75 hits and 39 stolen bases. That mark led the ACC. I wasn't surprised. I mean, he's athletic. Uh, I'm sure he wishes he was about two or three inches taller and 30, 30 pounds heavier, but uh, you know what? Those guys love that speed. He's got a good arm and puts the ball in play, makes a lot of stuff happen. Like his dad, he was a stolen base guy. Like Conlon, the center fielder now has some thinking to do. Yeah, there is. There is a lot to get into it because, you know, it's a tough decision. You know, I love it at, love it at school, like I said earlier, and at the same time, you know, it would be awesome to start my career. So. Yeah, it's a tough decision that I'm going to have to make, but you know, it's a good decision to have to make. In the meantime, White has bases to steal and balls to track down in the North Woods League to keep his mind at ease. The former Husky has until July 12th to decide whether to sign with the Yankees or return to College Park.